to retake and as you can see it's the Amiga 500 mini day but um, I'm not going to be reviewing this straight away this is going to be done in my next video which will be released shortly after this one and the reason for that is because um, I had quite a few good comments on my previous video about this machine really this um, Amiga that I created over two years ago and again it's a recreation of the Amiga 500 so it's basically what this I hope this would kind of been but you know it isn't hopefully it will be but this is what this video is all about so and a couple of the comments um, that I've got and a few of the emails and stuff from other people that I've had um, they're kind of going into a little bit more depth on this 500 creation um, basically it, the consensus rather is is that you will not find um, an Amiga 500 replication or recreation in this kind of style full-size keyboard looking like an A500 obviously in its original kind of beigey color um, but we won't be seeing that because from all kind of uh, consensus from a few of the comments that I've got and also a few of the emails I've got is basically this is going to be the only version of the Amiga 500, which is going to be the Mini. Now, there is um, a few rumours that it might be the 600 that will come out as a full-size model, but I kind of don't see the point in that because it's fairly easy. It's fairly easy to create an Amiga 500 replica. You've got the guts and the innards and the basic electronics out of the 500 mini okay that that was proven when we went from this to the full size model of the commodore 64 and the vic 20 and so on now there's no reason that you can't go from this to something like this there is no reason and they're stating cost now cost isn't the factor it used to be i mean this here okay is another one i've actually just picked up it's also for um, another bit of an insight into these models as a whole okay which will be coming soon but i've got two of these and basically the first one i played with and i quite enjoyed it it was good to have something come out that was new in the kind of retro market and i can surely see the advantage of that and one of these um but i picked this one up simply because a they're going in the bargain basement bins now and you, i got this for about 27 pounds brand new okay and um it seems like you know they're having trouble shifting these in the wild so to speak so um i decided just to pick one of these up it can be used for messing about with taking apart doing something with it doing a project well just using it as it is um but i did find an issue with that which I'll come to in a second, um, or rather I'll come to in a slightly later video. So anyway, the 500, the A500, the, the Mini, okay, by all accounts, which we'll see when I have a look at it, um, it's quite a decent little model, and so was this originally. You know, you can't knock this as a, as a concept, um, as the execution, um, but when cost comes into it, and they're now starting to tout cost as a reason why you won't get a 500 bigger version, or maxi, or whatever you want to call it, um, well, that makes no real sense, okay? Because originally, this was touted to retail at about sort of the 60 to 80 pounds mark in the UK, right? Which isn't you know that bad to be honest and but they were almost very quickly dropped to about 50 pound to the 49.95 or 99 mark and that was very shortly after they came out when they were launched okay so they were obviously making something out of that anyway right so then you've got the bigger version the maxi version of this as we call it just to differentiate it between the two and that came out at about 112 pounds when it was through amazon and wherever you wanted to buy it the GameStop, game shops and all this kind of thing and 
So really, you got a full size version for not really a massive amount more than this Mini. And now you've got the A500, which is priced at more or less the same price or slightly more than the Commodore 64 Maxi version. Now to me, okay, you, they need to make a little bit of profit out of this. They need to be able to recoup their costs, but really it's not where it should be. You, you know, that if you carry on down that route, the full size version will probably cost as much as an original Amiga did back in the day. Now we're getting to that point where things are now starting to ramp up in value. I know there's um, a worldwide kind of issue with things going up at the moment, but you know, it doesn't explain um, a very massive jump between these two, really, when you think about it, because I know the internals of both are roughly in line with each other cost wise. And I know the production of the case will be roughly in line with each other cost wise. And I know it's been the same with the Pi, the 400, and it's kind of ramped up in cost. It's probably gone up about 15, 20% since it was launched, but it is on the increase, okay? Which we all understand that. But bringing out a full size model at £112 say, but then bringing out a Mini at £114, this makes no real sense. It seems like that there's just a bit of a, too much of a cost difference to justify it. Now if they bring an A600 version out of this, I don't really think it will be a popular move. The A600 wasn't a popular choice when it was first launched, although it's a very good machine and it has a lot of improvements over the A500. Um, but it wasn't as popular as the A500 and neither was the A1200. Now, the A500 is the iconic Amiga. Now, if I was going to do this, it would be the A500 all day long as a recreation as comparison to the A1200 and the 1000 and the 600. Now, the reason for that is that throughout Europe, especially, this is the major Amiga platform. And even in other countries and including the United States, the A500 is the one that people know the most generally. So this is its market share where this should be a full size version of this to add to the kind of plethora of recreated Commodore units. I know there's a lot of people out there who say, do you really need an A500 big version when you've got this? Well, yeah, playing some of the games on this is very difficult because there is no actual working keyboard. And if you're going to plug in a full size keyboard to this, you might as well have a full size keyboard with this unit inside, i.e. even a normal Microsoft keyboard with the actual PCB literally taped to the bottom would be a better move than having this and a keyboard etc and so on um, which is why the the maxi version was such a good move because all of the games worked the keyboard worked everything worked and it would do 99 percent of what the original commodore would do now that was a good thing so my opinion is is that I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out there who probably disagree, but we've got to start this kind of rolling a little bit because it's going to be too late when they bring out an A600 version of the Amiga with a full size keyboard and so on. And it's going to be too late for people to say, why didn't you bring out a 500? Maybe we would all pay an extra 50% on the cost of one of these to have a working version of one of these. Maybe that's you know, the most sensible route if they think cost is the major factor to it. So really, I think that these are, these are good products. I mean, they are generally decent products. They're well thought out. They're fairly well specced up. They do what they're meant to do. And in general, they're good. My, my little one has a full size version of this and he uses it all the time including in favor of or instead of his xbox and his nintendos and all that kind of stuff so yeah they do do their job but 
they're predominantly aimed at the older audience, the nostalgic audience, the retro gaming audience, not so much the person who wants to go out and buy a console. So an A500 full size version would be the route to go. I mean, let me know if it's if you think differently, whether you think the A600 would be a, a good move. I mean, personally, I like the A600. Personally, I think it's a cracking little machine. But you got to think market share is going to be the A500 every single time. So just a few remarks on the comments of this, because you know, we get the wows and oohs and ahs over these machines, but you know, very few people debate which one they would want, which is better, what's the best one to go for, what the pitfalls are, what the, you know, the, the highs and the lows are of these machines. So this is what this is all about. So anyway, thanks for watching this very, very brief kind of insight into a few of your comments. Um, I agree with a lot of them and I completely think that this is the route to go, possibly not the A600, but I would more than likely buy the A600 version anyway. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Please subscribe. See you. Bye bye.